you doing? Welcome back. Today we're going to get into what little bit of port work we are going to do to this and we try to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it without making things too complicated. I've decided on this build with a lot of others you've seen me do. Just kind of keep it simple. If you're doing this saw, the last video we done where I went in and cleaned up the base of the cylinder and done what little machine work I done. You could skip that. It's not going to make or break your build. Um, it'll still run just fine with 31,000 squish and it'll run dang good. I've done a many a saws here with squish let loose. 30,000 is better than say close to the 50 we were at when we started. My intentions for this, this saw was used to cut timber. Um, Hard, mainly hard woods in the area that he cuts in which is basically the same area I'm in we're not real far away like hour and a half two hours or so um, we're gonna go into the exhaust port the port will be widened slightly we're gonna clean everything up lay a really really good polish on it and just kind of leave it where it falls uh, we could go in and raise it move the RPM band on up but I do not really want to give up any of the static compression that we have gained or cranking compression however you want to say it from lowering the cylinder what bit we done by pulling the base gasket and doing the machine work you could probably say that stock gasket sometimes they're 15 thou I don't I can't find it I may have tossed it but Sometimes they're 15 thou, sometimes they're 20 thou. Um, I've seen some here that's a millimeter thick. Um, this one looked like your typical 15 thousandths gasket, so we're going to say squish with somewhere between 45 and 50 thousandths on this. So where we're at right now, once it's all said and done, we cut that in half. We lowered the exhaust roof maybe, maybe a degree, give us room to go in and do our cleanup and our polish and I'll probably stick to the original shape that's there just to make it a little bigger, make it flow a little better, uh, give it a good polish where carbon doesn't stick and build up over time and risk causing the cylinder to fail and that can happen and yes polishing does prevent that. I've had saws back in here that have been out in the field for over a year to two years and the exhaust port looks almost identical to what it done when it left here and a lot of that goes to quality of oil and fuel that you're running so what I've well. done right now on the intake timing part of things I would like to get the duration I'd like to add about 10 degrees of total open time to the cylinder uh, when we spec'd it out or mapped it out in the last video it had an open time of 142 degrees I'd rather see that at 150 to 152 That'll give us a bump in RPM, give us a little more torque. Uh, it's giving us more fuel and air charge to shove up through the transfers into the combustion chamber. Um, you can't go too far on the intake timing and it just increase upper RPM and kind of kill all of your grunt and torque and your throttle response. It's all a balancing act. We've been over all of that before. so. What I've done is I put the piston on PDC, <laughs> made a mark, see how much I could machine off of that safely. We're not going to take that much ever on anything, I don't think, unless we're retrofitting a piston out of something else into the saw. And I came around to the back side and I set my degree finder, and that may or may not be picking up, but I'll show it maybe on the GoPro if it doesn't but um, I set my degree finder at 74 degrees that gives me a little bit of room for margin for error if I, if I mess up on cleaning up the intake port maybe take too much away there but we should end up with that intake timing right in the general area where I want it to be and guys if you're doing this like half a degree, one degree, it ain't going to make or break the deal. Unless you've already taken things too far and then, yeah, it can kind of throw you for a loop. But as far as the upper transfers, uh, there's a pretty good amount of Nicosil overhang. What I'll do, I'm just going to go in and do some blend work, clean all that up. Probably not going to raise on any. 
will not purposely raise the exhaust roof any, but doing the cleanup and the polish, it will move things. Blending those uppers will kind of move things, and as far as lowers, we ain't going to touch them. This thing has humongous lowers. It's all nice. This cylinder's immaculate. We're not going to go in and touch the lowers. If you decide to do that, that's on you. Just know that you can take things too far there and you can lose a bunch of case pressure and in return no matter how much intake timing you've thrown at it you're going to lose rpm you're going to lose port velocity you're going to end up with a turd of us all what we're going to do is i'm not going to video at all but i'll get a little bit of gopro footage just kind of showing things and the process i'm going through like i've done on several other videos um, I've got another saw here below me that needs to be ported. We may go into more depth on that because I plan on making it quite some bit hotter than this saw. So, um, what we're going to end up in the end here is with a good, strong, fast work saw. Or that's my goal anyway. Faster than stock. Okay, guys, so what we've got here, I've got a brand new roll. Um, really about the size of the exhaust port or the corners of the exhaust port rather and I want to kind of stick to that same shape that it has so that's kind of a little trick I use and yes these will pull material away they will pull a lot of material away um, you can do the whole cylinder with these things if you want it just kind of get costly but a box of these usually lasts me quite a few saws. This will enlarge the port. If you get carried away, it will raise the exhaust through. Just like if you was using a double cut or a single cut. see those wheel chatter just like a, your double cut carbide burr or anything else you get carried away
really like the texture that's leaving so I'm gonna go ahead and use this same roll and go in and do my blend and texture work in the intake before before move on to the exhaust port on the polish decided I wanted something just a little rougher on that intake port. Run at a really, really slow speed. camera but if you fail to that it kind of has a sandpapery texture to it there. look at it from the inside then we'll go back to polish and the exhaust port we have some 320 on our slotted mandrel kind of finish that gives it we cut about an inch off of that paper we'll see if it runs a little smoother now Yeah. 
Transfers. We can get live in here on it. There we go. You have options. Now there's rod angle tools you can pick up. I don't know, 150, 200 bucks. I don't have one of those. I don't know the quality of them. I've had this one for a little over four years now. CC Specialties. This is the smaller hand piece. They say it'll go into a 33 cc cylinder i've had it into a 36 cc cylinder and a couple 35s uh, does well you do have to cut about half of the tail off of whatever insert you're putting in it but most any eighth inch uh, tooling you have that fits an eighth inch collet or chuck will work in it some of the cheaper stuff won't tighten up in it but as long as you've got okay quality stuff it will diamond abrasive i love using these but on this one we may do a little clean up with that we may not good old what is it chicago electric i don't know harbor freight i've had this one now probably i don't know going on two years or so the first one lasted about two years and the cable snapped i just went and bought another one and got the warranty put on it so far so good i'm sure it'll quit when the two-year warranty goes out if it does i got my money's worth i'll go buy another and i'll have another extra hand piece but um diamond abrasive round um if you don't have a right angle this will do 99 percent of transfer ports i refer back to this a lot some saws have tiny upper transfer openings as you can see, that's pretty tiny. You buy the whole set of diamond abrasives. I don't know, there's a bunch of these in it. It's less than 20 bucks for the whole set. Um, unless you're doing two or three saws a day, it's gonna last you a long time. Let's see if I can get in here and demonstrate. Like I said, all we're doing is a little blend work. It'll raise them. Um, flatten them out a little, but you're not gonna screw anything up with this. You can, but it's more than likely you're not going to because it's a really, really passive cut. And I have too many pedals down here. You can even do this with a Dremel flip shaft and those. I've done it for years. And the diamond abrasives allow for a good clean cut on the nick of seal and you don't freaking chip it and flake it and destroy it on a cylinder that you about can't go back and buy again but i'm not going to be able to video all of this maybe we can go in with the right angle and do a little bit just as a demonstration the right angle has a very very steep learning curve I realize I've got a mess here. We'll just go in and demonstrate. If you're using a really aggressive single or double cut, a steep, steep learning curve. But these diamond abrasives, you kind of do what you want. They don't take a lot of material. Like right there, there's a bump and a little burr that was there from the factory. We just knock that down. Get all the way to the back of the port. Like I said, we're just doing blend work here on those, and I think it's going to set them back to that distance from where we pulled the base gasket and done a little bit of machine work. But hopefully, the next thing you guys see is the finished cylinder. I'll probably run it through the ultrasonic again. Just to make sure we've got everything clean and out of it. Alrighty guys, first to start the piston. All I done was I chucked it up in the lathe backwards and where I'd made a mark on my intake port, I just kind of took it away up to that mark. You can really tell anything's been done to it by looking at it. And then I went around the whole piston with sandpaper, knocking down any sharp edges and 
I kind of put like a little bit of a texture back on the piston. In my theory and the way my mind thinks, that aids and helping it hold a little oil for lubrication a little better. And I took an old piston ring and cleaned out the ring grooves. Um, I did polish the wrist pin too because it fit really, really tight. So it should fit a little looser now. But All right, I'm going to show the port work. There's the intake port once it was done. See how close we can get. Nice texture on that. We're about to get a thunderstorm. I don't want to complain. We need all the rain we could get here. And there's a look at that. From the inside, nothing spectacular. See if we can get some light on the upper transfers, maybe. There we go. Nothing spectacular there. Just kind of went in, knocked down a nick of seal plating. Done some blend work. Didn't touch the lowers. No need. They are huge anyway. The windows on the piston are huge. No need for any real modification there at all. Maybe. If you disagree with that, that's fine. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Exhaust port. Opened her up. Made polish on it. Just widened a little bit, at least a little bit. It works all, but more go crazy. Look at it from the inside. Not too shabby. Of course, you know, the machine work. I did run that through the ultrasonic cleaner again. She looks like a new piece, real nice. Um, unfortunately, in this video, you're not going to get to see it run, but I am going to put the piston on and give you the final timing numbers on it, which are going to be really, really similar to the timing numbers that we got before. But I'll bring you back once I get that done. Alright guys, we're going to wrap this one up. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to run it or cut with it in this video. I'm waiting on AV springs for the saw and I've got to kind of have those before I can reassemble the whole thing. You guys understand, I'm sure. But um, Final numbers on it. Once it's said and done and glued down, squish should be right on 25 thou. We've got 24 now with nothing. Um, 104 on the exhaust roof it should have a really nice thump should have killer compression should pull whatever bar he wants to put on it you know with the reason I guess but um, 122 on the uppers I kind of wanted to stick with that short blow down that it had from the get go um, that's 18 degrees um, 74 and a half on the intake. I did measure complete open to close. It's been on 150 degrees of total open time. So um, should be a pretty good boost over where it would have been stock with the base gasket. And should be like daylight to dark difference from where it was at when we brought it here. Um, but with that said, I'll try to get a video thrown together. Alright guys, quick edit. Anyone that watched this long deserves to get to see this thing run, if it'll run. Um, no, I'm not going to start it in here, but she is together. I'm not going to bar it up right now. I want to heat cycle it a bunch before putting it in a piece of wood and dogging around on it. Because when I get it to a piece of wood, I'm going to want to dog around on it because I've spent a lot of time on the saw. Uh, I did have one of these laying. Um, it, I guess it was aftermarket because it kind of works. It's actually holding as good as the rest of those. But I think the plastic on this thing seen better days. But as you can see, it all cleaned up well. Um, had this AV mount was broke. This one, if I can find it, it was bent like bent really bad. You know, I'm not, not gonna sit and dig around for it. But you can take my word for it. It was on its way out. Uh, this one looked good. I ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner, put it back in. Um, the one on the front was good. The rubber one, this one over here, was good. It just needed a washer and needed tightened up. The holes on the front of the thing are all wallowed out in the cases. 
Uh, this one over here I replaced and I'm talking little rubber bushings on the bottom. Hopefully you can see where I'm pointing. Uh, as well as uh, it had no type of rubber inserts down here at all. Um, so I dug around, I had some of those and put them on it. Um, so it feels good now, good and tight. I guess about like it would have if it was new. These handle inserts, there's no way in hell those were for this handlebar. They were actually identical to the ones I just put in the 357 handle. No real difference in them at all. Or 257 handle rather. Um, I sat and whittled on those and filed on them to get them to half ass go in there and I've got them glued in so they should be okay. I've got an old 2188 or 390 handle or something over here that has the inserts this should have. Or it actually had one busted up one but they are flat and just like I thought they go in with adhesive backed tape. Um, they might snap on the ends but they do have adhesive backed tape on them. Um, put a new, at a new OEM interlock works like a pro um, I ordered that I actually had a spring laying here um, I'm trying to think guys we're down the barons of seals um, I put a new number four rope in it the one that was in it looked like it came in it uh, new cable rings uh, fuel line and stuff in it looked good uh, of course it ran good before so I didn't screw with the carburetor um, New oil pump, new worm gear, um, highway stuff, uh, new clutch, clutch bearing, rim, um, and clutch drum. Uh, I'm trying to think, guys, uh, and I know I'm adding time to this video and it's going to be horribly long, but muffler mod, this was, these are all but about closed off from the factory and someone had already went in and gutted everything out of that muffler. Hence, someone had muffler modded it years ago, I guess, but uh, what they didn't do was cut all of that stuff out that's actually blocking flow and would cause it to heat up, but uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to see if I can get it fired up and then hopefully show you guys a clip of it running and end this god-awful long video. Yeah, she's sounding pretty nasty. Um, and I put a kill switch in it too and worked on the wiring, worked on the cool wire. Um, just trying to think of what all I have done to it. It's sounding really good. Have you seen I'm asked the decomp? It, it probably has more compression to decomp pushed in now than it had without before. bar oil everywhere down the back side of it now so probably one day next week after I've heat cycled this thing a bunch we'll get it out and bar it back up and see if we can lay on the dogs now I'll about guarantee you we can she'll take whatever you want to throw at it but anyway guys y'all have a good one <laughs>